Okay guys, take a look at this. You might have already known about this feature on Google Maps, but if you don't, you should know about it. It's kind of new-ish and it would have been really useful um, when I was drawing a cool scene overlooking a uh, Chrysler building. But yeah, this is New York City. This is Midtown New York City. Um, if you go over here and you change uh, to satellite, it's going to start looking like this. No big surprises for a lot of you, I'm sure. Um, and what turns up over here is a 3D option, as well as this cool rotate -y thing. So, click on the 3D, and now you get to see these buildings in 3D, which is pretty cool. Now you can also rotate. Looks like you can rotate about, there's like four settings, right? Well, that's a little bit limited, but still really cool. No, there's more though. So you can zoom in and see things. It kind of changes the perspective when you zoom in, which is cool. But even cooler than that is, if you see when I hover over this, it says control plus mouse drag for full 3D. So check this out. You can drag this any way you want. Look at how amazing that is. And you can go in really close as well. Like, watch this. You can create really cool scenes using stuff like this. Um, sometimes they'll zoom you out a little bit if you're like too close in the buildings and it obstructs the view. But yeah, here is a uh, good old Freedom Tower, which I can't see. There we go. Good old Freedom Tower right here. And uh, you can look at it from above like this. You can have somebody flying through. This is a really useful thing for artists. Um, mid downtown is a little bit short, but yeah, check out this. Here's the Empire State Building. You know, a lot of times as an artist, you're gonna wanna draw somebody flying around the Empire State Building. Well, this takes the guesswork out of it, doesn't it? I mean. Look, I'm actually not a big fan of reference drawing. I think uh, it makes you a little scared of yourself. It makes you distrust your own ability to draw things. And more importantly, I think a lot of times it's not as good because you're being too loyal to the reference. But if you're using this kind of stuff uh, for just some information and inspiration for buildings around it, rather than following it to the letter, rather than tracing over it, um, or you could trace over it if you feel like, I'm not saying that I would never do that, but I tend to feel like whenever you do that sort of thing, you end up with people being the size of ants and you end up not having certain buildings in a shot that would actually make it more dynamic. So, um, all the same though, yeah, you can just ride through New York. Isn't this crazy? Let's just like take a ride down this street here. What street is it? I don't know. Is it 6th Avenue? Who knows? We're just going to let it take us wherever we want. Following it up this way until we reach... Hey, look over here. Here's Central Park. And as you see, it takes a while for a lot of this stuff to process. It's, it takes up quite a lot of uh, internet and computer power to process all this sort of stuff. but. How cool is that though? You don't even have to be in a certain city in order to see it in a 3D realm. And it can really help you plan out your shots to make them more dynamic, uh, make you kind of sum up certain areas. It's really, really cool. So anyway, just thought you should know. Maybe you already knew, but if you didn't, now you do.